Welcome back to this week's technical. Don't forget, if you like this video, by all means, go and have a look at some of the previous videos. See what you think. If you like what you see and what you hear, don't be afraid to give the videos a thumbs up. Subscribe, ring the little bell next to the subscribe button so you get video notifications. And of course, feel free to leave me some feedback in the comments. Let's get into this one. Triclobendazole is one of the most important flucicides, that is a fluke killing product, that we have in the UK. That's because it kills very young, immature liver fluke. The time period between sheep and cattle actually eating the liver fluke larvae to it becoming an adult liver fluke within the animal is about 12 weeks. That's a long time. There are different stages of development and different vulnerabilities to different fluke products. Some other flucicides can kill immatures, but not typically as young as triclobendazole, and it's often the immature fluke that are doing the damage. I'll put up a really great table here from SCOPS, that is the Sustainable Control of Parasites in Sheep, which details the different kill profiles of the different flucicides in sheep at least, typically quite similar in cattle but not identical. Because it has this unique effectiveness against young immature liver fluke, triclobendazole containing products, this includes and is certainly not limited to products like endofluke, Facimec, Facinex and so on, have been used widely and for a long time in the UK. Our mild wet climate really does favour the liver fluke parasite and its mud snail host. But as with any parasite drug, its success can also be its downfall. Liver fluke, like any other living thing, when subject to a selection pressure, in this case triclobendazole, a product that should kill it, will eventually develop resistance, that's survival of the fittest, that's going back to Charles Darwin. Repeated exposure of liver fluke populations to triclobendazole will lead to selection for liver fluke that are resistant to the triclobendazole products. This is pretty bad news and is probably underreported and so more common than we think. I'm going to say this now and you'll hear me repeat it throughout this video. If you suspect or are worried about triclobendazole resistance, go and talk to your vet. Don't assume resistance and also don't try and drench your way out of resistance with other products. Go and talk to your vet. It will take a pretty holistic approach to get around this. Before we get too pessimistic, there are reasons other than resistance that triclobendazole products can fail. If resistance is suspected, these are all worth ruling out. These factors include underdosing according to weight, underdosing due to poorly calibrated equipment, product that is out of date or otherwise perished, reinfection. Remember, no flucicide has persistency. That means animals can get reinfected immediately after treatment. There is no long acting protection. Or if liver damage has already occurred due to liver fluke, triclobendazole actually needs to be processed by the liver before it can get to work. If the liver is shot to pieces by the liver fluke, that's not going to happen very well. Investigating triclobendazole resistance is further confused by the absence, at least at the time of making this video, of any standardized or validated tests. A couple are mentioned on the SCOPS website. Again, the link is in the video description. If you are investigating potential resistance, this needs to be really carefully planned between you and your vet. Of course, the question is, what if you find resistance? What are the next steps? There are several different approaches, such as the use of non-triclobendazole products, strategic housing, grazing different parts of the farm at different times of year, and management of the mud snail habitat. These measures are so specific to each farm, it would be pretty hopeless of me, and probably not appropriate, to try and go through or recommend anything specific in this video. Talk to your vet instead. It is worth mentioning that triclobendazole resistance can end a sheep enterprise. Certainly, one of our clients stopped keeping breeding ewes because they just couldn't manage the triclobendazole resistance in a way that was feasible. How might you avoid triclobendazole resistance? The first thing is you don't want to bring it in. Remember, any sheep coming onto the farm could be carrying triclobendazole resistant fluke. This is one of the benefits of operating a closed flock or herd. Strategic treatments of non-triclobendazole based products such as clozantel or nitroxanil 
will go some way to helping in conjunction with housing new stock for a given number of weeks or by using isolation paddocks that you know for a fact are not mud snail habitats. Again, for the specifics, go and talk to your vet. But again, the general principle is treat every oncoming animal as a potential Trojan horse. What have they got hidden inside them? Assuming you don't buy trichlobendazole resistance in, how can you stop it developing at home on the farm? Really, any measure that moderates or reduces the use of trichlobendazole will help. Again, it's lessening the selection pressure, lessening the exposure of liver fluke to trichlobendazole. That could be through very careful rotational use of trichlobendazole with non-trichlobendazole products. It's certainly not simple, again, because no other product kills as young immatures as trichlobendazole does. The same goes for tests to qualify whether treatment is needed or not. Not all farms will need to treat for liver fluke every year. These tests include the fluke antibody test, the coproantigen and the fecal egg count. But again, I know I sound like a broken record, this needs to be planned very carefully with your vet. Because if livestock don't get a dose of trichlobendazole when they need it, there could be pretty serious consequences. Certainly for sheep, cattle are relatively resilient. And remember, trichlobendazole resistance is not an issue limited to certain regions of the UK. If that all sounds pretty doom and gloom, remember this, this is fully within our control. What we all need to be better at, and I would include myself in this, is not reaching for a bottle of something when there might be a problem just to be safe. Because if we do that, we use these products relentlessly year in, year out, they will stop working and we'll be in a much, much worse position than we were before. The same principle goes for wormers. The same principle goes for using injectable macrocyclic lactones for sheep scab. The same principle goes for using oral antibiotics in lambs. To paraphrase someone more intelligent than me, trichlobendazole needs to be used as much as necessary and as little as possible. Once again, and I promise this is the last time, if you suspect trichlobendazole resistance, and I cannot stress this highly enough, you need to go and talk to your vet about it. Anyway, that's it for this one. I really hope that was useful. Unfortunately, I think this is something that's going to rear its head more and more in the coming years. If you liked it, found it useful, you think you might find future videos useful, don't forget to click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it, give the video a thumbs up, and by all means, leave me any feedback, good, bad, indifferent, in the comments section. Cheers, and see you next time.